the legend has it that she was destined, or maybe uh, certainly a prince wanted to marry her, but she wanted to devote her life to God, and she particularly wanted, I believe, to enter religious order, I think, but she had to flee his, atten his attentions, and I think that's when the legend arose that he'd made advances to her, and he had the temerity to take her hand and was struck dumb by her, but, but, as, as a result of this unfortunate behaviour. And then St. Margaret appeared and healed his blindness. I gather he lived a, a rather more chaste life after that experience. <laughs> I'm Edward Evans, the Dean's Verger at Christchurch Cathedral, Oxford, which was founded in the 9th century by Frideswide, a Saxon princess who later became a nun, and after her death she was canonised, put in a shrine, which was rebuilt several times, and the last one from the 14th century is here. The reason I got interested in Frideswide in the first place was because my children were at that point at Frideswide School, which was the local middle school. And I thought, well, I wonder who this Frideswide was. Frideswide was um, somebody you remember as a saint, but she was a princess, the daughter of King Dyden, and she uh, was born in the um, sixth century, um, and, or the seventh century, and she. Um, became a nun and uh, founded um, uh, a convent in this area and um, and that basically was the beginning of the story of Oxford which uh, is why she's remembered as the patron saint of Oxford. This is a window done in 1858 by Edward Burne Jones which tells the legend of St Frideswide who was pursued by a man from the north, King Algar, who wanted to marry her she refused him, became a nun instead, and he chased her to various places around Oxford, ending up at Binsey. When I was small, we used to think nothing of going for long country walks, and we used to go up St Binsey Lane and along a little pathway to the Church of St Margaret's, which is, of course has a very strong association with St Frideweiss. And a great source of fascination was the Little Wishing Well, as it's now called. But in years ago, it used to be a pilgrimage church, and people would, would go to the well hoping for healing. And it's still there, and you can still see it. <laughs> There's that place still down at Binsey, where people do seem to go and um, make contact with what you might call the, the sort of ongoing spirit of Frideswide. You know, it, it's kind of a real presence there in people's minds. What is important is that, uh, well, there was a woman who uh, founded uh, a monastic community uh, right back then, and she obviously was very determined. I mean, that comes over in the in the in the mythology, in the stories, she got round to founding a monastery and to being remembered as really the founder of Oxford uh, and all that Oxford has uh, produced. So she's in, in a way the origin. Pride's White shows that the beginning of Oxford, which for so long was a male-dominated university, entirely male university, was uh, founded by a woman and her own saints, her favourite saints, who she prayed to, St Catherine and St Margaret were themselves women. So the beginnings of the story of Oxford is, a, is a, uh, definitely a, a story dominated by a women saints. My feelings about Frideswide is how easy it is for the real identity to become lost in the story and um, Frideswide is one of the key seminal founders of Oxford and yet her story has become lost and little known and that's why I wrote the piece. I really wanted to try and reconnect with the spirit of the actual woman who had actually had such a profound role in the history of this city. There are many things that inspire us about Frideswide's life but somebody who was born to be a princess and live in the lap of luxury, um, renouncing worldly wealth to live a life devoted to prayer and service to others is a, is a 
an example that's perennially relevant to every age, I think. Brightside's gift is that if you come with an honest question, an honest request, you can expect an answer and uh, you can expect a response.